Moto America fans, it's time for another episode of Off Track with Carruthers and Bice. You'll laugh, you'll cry, and you may even learn something from this unlikely pair and their special guest. The mic is yours, Paul and Sean. Hey, what's up, Moto America fans? This is Garrett Gerloff, and we are here with the Paul Carruthers and Sean Bice over here uh, with Off Track. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay, more or less. That was it. Yeah. Good enough. <laughs> yeah, We're here off with Garrett Gerloff, who is our two-time Super Sport champion. And, uh, oh, you did oh, you did something a couple of weeks ago that was good. What was it? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, he, he won his first super bike race at Lincoln oh, Stadium. That doesn't matter. Almost We've forgot. all it moved so on. Long. Oh, we have. Uh, we, <laughs> We've all moved you, on. You can barely get your fat head through the door <laughs> in here. What have you done for me lately? <laughs> Uh, all, all I'm thinking about is this weekend. I'm thinking about tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. when I'm on track. So, so how's yep. your life changed from then to now? I mean, other than the, yeah. the uh, inflated ego. <laughs> uh, I Brutal. mean, I've, the only thing that's changed is I had a birthday, so I'm 24 now. That's 24. Not, that's wow. I feel like I'm a year older. So well, you were 23 when you won. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Not too did, bad. Did it seem like... <laughs> I mean, you guys made me look like I was 65. <laughs> that was it. pretty rough. That was a low yeah. blow. Yeah, that, that was now, kind of. A, I mean, it wasn't not true. It was true, but it was a low blow. Yeah, I, well, now my ID, I know it's your fault. And my too. ID got sent to Russia because of that. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's right. So we're all losers. <laughs> my bank account's been hacked. Has it? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, karma. <laughs> yeah, karma, karma it is. So anyway, did you? So, sometimes it was funny because I think I I might have even written it at some point said like you finally won, but it was only a year. Did it did it seem like it was a long time for you, or did you see? Or did it seem like it came pretty quick? Yeah, I just race? I mean it just seemed like uh, it just seemed like a long time for me because I feel like I've been close uh, more than a couple times, and and uh, I just feel like I just kept feeling it just slip through my through my grasp, you know. And so to finally get it does feel really good. But I mean, last year, last year was a pretty decent year that I had on the on the bike and everything. But there was a little bit of uh, growing pains, and you know, just some, this lot was different. And I feel like I adapted pretty well. But everybody, it was like when I got on the bike, all of my lap times and like qualifying times would have been front of the you know front of the pack from 2017 and like pole position from 2017 but everybody had taken that step right. forward so it was just kind of like i just always felt one step behind and now i'm starting to kind of like you know catch up with everybody i, I guess um but man i mean it's a it's a stacked it's a stacked class like but I, th I don't think a lot of people realize it sometimes but there's six guys that are right. all stacked. ass that are ready to win so and it's it, tough i mean how Year two has got to be a huge difference for you, though. You go back to the track, you've got some settings, whether yeah, they're right yeah, or yeah. wrong, you've got some for settings. For sure. And, uh, and last year, like, I had an idea of what I wanted from the bike when I was testing in the beginning of 2018, but I had just come off of, man, what was it, like six years on a 600. Yeah. And having that kind of feeling and that kind of... So when I, when I got off the R6 in, in 2017, that was, like, the perfect bike for me. And, and still, like, I think it was an awesome, epic bike, but it's just hard to try to get the same feelings out of a thousand, even though it's the same manufacturer and there's not, I mean, there are a lot of, a lot of differences, but I, in my head, I was thinking, hey, I can make the R1 feel like I have my R6, but mm -hmm. that just kind of wasn't the right, so right you, way to do it. At some point you give up on that and just say, I gotta yeah, move this. Yeah, I mean, well, I kind of gave up on it at, in, at the first round in Atlanta in 2018, just because like testing had gone so well and I had gone fast and had some really fast times, but when it came down to racing, uh, I just wasn't, it wasn't working out. Like it just, um, there was just a lot of things that, that weren't helping me ride the bike fast and especially over the race distance. So just stuff that, you know, kind of sometimes can be tough to learn, but you got to learn at some point. So, you know, it's, it's weird when you transitioned from the, you started out on the previous generation R6 and then they changed it to the new one and the ergonomics were a little different. I always felt yeah. like, okay, the bike's a little bigger. It's going to suit you better because you're a lankier rider. And to, to your point, I thought, well, that R6 ergonomically is kind of similar to an R1, but it's yeah. quite a jump from that. I mean, it is. Like, you sit on the bike and you're like, oh, it's not like a whole lot different, but there's still some pretty big differences as far as geometry goes and how how we would set the bike up and some of the electronics and stuff. And there's just way more you can adjust on these bikes too. So you can kind of get into a circle and, and not a good circle sometimes. Right. And try to, It's hard to get out of that and try or, or find something else that works. So... But we've done really well this off season. I had a year under my belt, so I knew more of like what I needed to work on to be a better racer this year. And I mean, I think it's I think it showed. We showed up at Atlanta and got pole position. And right. I mean, I was really looking forward to an awesome weekend, but then I you know I messed up and I had the crash in, in the first race, and then I had the problem with my fender in the second race, and 
and uh, that kind of that that hurt you know that hurt a lot that was I felt like I was gonna have an awesome weekend and and uh, really show up how I wanted to show up the year before but without just kind of just like a you know knife to the chest a little bit and then we went to uh where we go after that <laughs> to uh Coda, Coda. Yeah, yeah Coda was awesome too but like in the first race I had pro- problems getting my bike started and the pace car passed me so I had to go and start at the back of the grid was, but I went from like 18th place and got on the podium and was right there at the end with Cam and, and Tony. So it was like awesome to feel like I had made some steps up and was able to race with those guys. Um, but then like the next day, I just didn't have that like one, 2% to, to be right there battling for the podium. And I don't know, it's just been, this year has been gone a lot better, but it's been uh, just little ups and downs and not no real, no real, um, you know, my goal is always to win. So to, to without winning, I just feel like Gosh, you know, like why? Why am I not doing this? But yeah. uh, you to, did pick a pretty good one to win, though. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't I mean, too you, bad. <laughs> you won in front of the right people. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I mean, you, one day. Did you ever think, like, when I get my first win? I mean, of course, you're not going to think, oh, it's going to be at this track. Like, you probably thought you were going to win in Atlanta, you know. And, and we thought it was, was going to be before here. But yeah. it's kind of weird. It was at Laguna of all places, you know, World Superbike yeah, going sure. on and, the whole bit. Yeah, and especially because the year before I had had a horrible Laguna, <laughs> so I think I got fourth and fifth place, which you know doesn't isn't horrible, but from where to where I want to be and stuff and I was pretty far back from Cameron you know so it was it was a nice turnaround this year to but come in the year before that though you had like amazing lap times yeah, on your 600 yeah I so, mean people paid attention to that like hold oh, this guy could be like on the second row of the yeah. superbike race <laughs> yeah that was epic that that was like that was a perfect weekend for me like I still remember that weekend on the 600 and being like man can I can I ever live up to this again you know <laughs> uh, but but yeah it was good to, it was nice to do it again this year, more or less. So. I was kind of disappointed after the race because I didn't think you were very excited. I, I was, <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> Could we see some more excitement out of you next time? Maybe. I mean, I'm, I don't. I'll be excited the next time I win, but uh, there's nothing yeah, like there's the just, first one. Th- yeah, and, and um, man, there's just I've been through a lot, you know, in my whole career. I've sacrificed a lot. I've had really low times. I've had really high times and stuff, and and. Um, it is like I, I don't th- I didn't even really realize it until I won but man that's a that's a for me it's a prestigious thing AMA superbikes have no, had a lot of Moto deal. America superbikes have had like a lot of uh, yeah a lot of champions in the past that have gone and done done big things and the guys I'm racing against right now are no they're not slouches you know so right. to just to do it and be like on the board at least as one of the guys that's done it uh, man it, it, me- it meant a lot to me and it kind of hit me as I was going around and stuff and uh yeah just it's kind of like a confirmation of uh of all the things that i've been doing and you know i've been busting my butt i haven't been giving up you know like, like there was a couple times last year i was like man I, i'm sick of this like i feel like i'm doing everything right but i'm just keep getting like just slapped in the face left and right uh and so just yeah it just felt nice just felt, felt really know, good just a confirmation that i'm going the right way i remember that was kind of a case with you on the 600 too there was a time where you were like, I'm tired of getting sick, second. I'm sick of this. And then yeah. you started winning and it kind of changed. It was the same kind of thing. It was like you started getting frustrated by that too. So do you remember that time period? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I had a, uh, there was a lot of just in general, when I first got on this, this 600 with the Graves team when I was 16, I mean, I was just a kid. And so like from then on, I had a lot of growing to do just as a, as a person in general, but also as a racer. And you could see that as the years go on, and uh, and yeah, I finally kind of figured it out the last the last couple years that I was on the 600. But for sure, I mean, I don't give up. I know what I want, and I know what I want to accomplish in, in my life. But for sure, when it's rough times and you keep getting yes. kicked kicked while you're on the ground, it does hurt sometimes, and it can be hard to kind of get back up. But once you do, you know, you can do it, and you know you can keep doing it. So that's kind of yeah, I guess that that little bit of uh, uh, what do you call it, toughness that that I've kind of developed a little bit maybe <laughs> so i don't give up <laughs> well the funny thing is now paul paul went down to the j force training camp that you were at and paul oh, yeah. said something to me that i had heard before from cameron bobier and years ago cameron said the t- time period when you were here and you were kind of you were living with him for a while and you guys were training together and cameron used to say man you guys would go do moto or something and he go he said right out of the bat uh, right off the bat he was like going fast as hell and I was worried he was going to get hurt and Paul said the same thing Paul said everything you were doing at that camp you are so competitive you just what? want to totally dominate I just thought you were, I, mean, I mean you're you, talking behind my back no no, no it's all good no we're sure just competitive it. It. It, it wasn't like I didn't give a crap yeah no I was like oh my god I think he's going a little too hard on that supermoto bike and something could happen no what it, but you're I, obviously comfortable I'm with trying it, so to, yeah. I'm trying to learn I mean I, 
for me, like what I'm trying to do is is be <laughs> comfortable on the edge and you know, maybe it looks scary sometimes, but yeah, I, I, it's am, one of those I am like I do feel pretty comfortable like kind of yeah, you're, you're, almost crashing and crashing some I crashed that day. Right. <laughs> Lost our GoPro temporarily. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't you know, I don't know what happened yeah. with that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean it's just a confidence thing. I mean when you have full of confidence you just ride like and it's always scary to watch somebody do something it is for them yeah, doing. Yeah, for sure it. when Cam <clears throat> Peterson jumped on my bike and was doing laps, I was scared watching right. him on my bike. I was like, "Whoa, dude, back there." Right. So but that's all I was I saying. think I think it just from the outside it looks a little worse and it it, it, it doesn't feel that bad for me on the bike. So, right. when I'm competitive, I want to I want to try to go fast and and for I mean, and the had, stuff I do out there, stock, they had lap times on there. Yeah, yeah, and then you put a bunch help. of guys with lap times. Yeah. It's like no, it's it's uh then it's a race for sure. But there's, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff that I can, um, that I have learned just riding supermoto and stuff. But I mean, I, I didn't really, the things, all the things I learned is when I was like a little bit over the limit and just kind of playing with me, almost tucking the front, but kind of saving it or sliding the rear and, but saving it. I don't know, things like that, I feel like kind of translate to what I'm doing on the superbike. So back to Laguna real quick. Did you know, like after race one that you had to like get out front and get out front early and that you, you would have the pace to get away? I didn't think, I mean, after warm up, Tony was the guy. Like, Tony was, you know, consistently four tenths faster than us in, in warm up. And it was just warm up, but it is kind of like a heads up for the race, maybe. Right. And, uh, I mean, we were all in the same tires and stuff. And so, I mean, he, he had pace. Um, so, basically, like in the beginning of, of Laguna, I just, all I knew was that if there was an opening, like I wanted to take it and I wanted to be in the race, you know, like I felt, I felt like I had, um, uh, not messed up in race one, but Tony had a lot of pace in race one, but but I felt really good too. So at the end, I, I was pacing him. It was just kind of like yo-yoing, but I was just doing this the last 10 laps, but I had nothing I had nothing as far as tires go to help me close that gap, that 5 tenth gap up to him and try to make a move. So it was just kind of frustrating. So I just was like, I'm, I'm going to be in this race today. And so when the gap opened up on the first lap, I'd already, I already knew I was taking it. So I took it and just try to put in solid laps and and I knew I could be really consistent because that's something I always work on and that was something I was really good at um, in practice at Laguna. So I, I, I knew that if I could just do consistent laps, maybe I could stay up front, but I, I really didn't expect to kind of open up a little bit of a gap, but I'm, I'm glad Was it surprising when your senior board go up? Uh, not necessarily surprising, <laughs> but I was just like, Right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's keep going. You know. Right. Uh, it does. It and it feels really good when you just kind of see it growing little by even if it's little by little. Like it, it does feel nice. But for sure, when I, like halfway, uh, half race or something like that, it was like two two and a half seconds, and I was like, man, this could I can mess this up right now if I run wide. You know, like I can mess this up right now. So I was trying my best to not think about that and well, just let's do, talk do about laps. that because I mean the fans have probably seen the clip. You not only had the win, an epic oh, win, yeah. but <laughs> you had the moment. Tell us about the moment. It was a pretty yeah. good save, actually. No, for sure. And it was funny because I watched the race after, and I and Jason Pridman was like, "Yeah, he's not even gonna remember about, like that. He's not even gonna remember that moment. You know, he's just gonna keep doing his thing, whatever." But I, I mean, I remember it for sure. I still remember it. It was big because. I mean, a lot of people at Laguna, they say the corkscrew is the, the scariest or, or the most famous, and it, you know, it is, but um, as far as the most famous, but this, for sure the scariest part of the track is turn one, and especially on the superbike. I mean, you're hauling, you're hauling ass, and the, the, the track drops away from you, and you have that rise, and, and I don't even really know what happened. All I know is that the, the rear tire kind of, it always slides over the top, but it kind of hooked up right there and gave like put me into a wheelie and then slid again so it was just kind of uh like this weird reaction and it put me into kind of a tank slapper with my front wheel in the air going what whatever 150 155 and then it kind of set down and as it set down it kind of pushed the front mm. and and kicked me off the seat a little bit and then I, and then just like straightened out immediately and i was in the braking zone and i was I was like, oh my gosh, all right. <laughs> like, like, I only have 10 more laps. Come on, you can do this, you know? Have uh, you ever experienced that there in that turn before or after that happened? Uh, no, not like that, no. No, that was probably the worst one. I wonder what it was. One. I wonder what caused it all of a sudden. Uh, just the tires, get, the tires go off. And at the top, we have like, you know, the trash control and, and wheelie control kind of kicking in right there and just had a bad combination of everything. And, but luckily it didn't, you know, didn't knock me off. So <laughs> I can't mean. complain. <laughs> No, it added it to it. It added <laughs> yeah, to the drama. Yeah, I was like, holy it crap, out. he's really flying. So yeah. from watching the races there and and not every track, but it just seems like <clears throat> the way the Suzuki is and the way Tony rides it, it's like 
it's like you and Cameron, it's sort of like things are intersecting at bad points. And that's yeah, why that's, I think like once you get ahead, you know that that's obviously your best option chance with him. But it seems like the way that he rides combined with the way that bike works, it's like a perfect it's like a perfect storm for him, but it creates problems for you guys. Cause it always looks like I see a lot of this and 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 I can see uh, Cameron yeah, yeah, was yeah. really frustrated with it. Well, you obviously weren't because you managed to get by. Well, I, I know I've been know, I've been there. You right. know, like I, I've raced with Tony and Josh, and yeah, it's, I mean they have just a little bit more like acceleration. It seems like and less wheeling, which is kind of uh, you know a big part of getting off the corner, and they do that really well. And, but they're just slower in a lot of places that were way faster. So it can just be like yeah, kind of a uh, just a bad place to kind of intersect on how our bikes work, but. Is this um, is this place? Let's make it interesting. <laughs> is this place in where it's Sonoma Raceway? By the way, I don't know if we mentioned that. Yeah, at Sonoma. All. But um, <laughs> is it is, is this place? Is it does it not do that? Or because um, it seems like Cameron's no, just been I, so dominant here. Yeah, he has dominated for sure the last few years. But I, I would actually think this would be a re, uh, probably one of the worst places for that, as far as our bikes really showing how different they are. Just because here we have uh, like really hard braking into turn seven, I think it is. We have really hard braking into the tight chicane, uh, and then we have really hard braking into the last corner. Those are places where I feel like the Suzuki is really really strong and can kind of gang up on us. But then we have some faster parts of the track where I feel like our bike's better, but also sometimes that can, uh, the, part, the parts of the track where it flows more, it, there is some elevation which, which can kind of make our bikes I feel like a little unstable and maybe the Suzuki's do it a little bit better. So I would think it'd be a good track for us to have a, uh, like an epic race, but mm. it hasn't really shown, no. it hasn't really been like that the last few years. I don't know, maybe this year it'll be different, but we'll see. <laughs> we, last week, Paul and I did the podcast ourselves and we talked about what what is Tony doing when he's out there? I mean, he well when what, he's looking at you while he passes well, you. He's, he's doing well, he, but he's he's doing this stuff and come up behind know. me. And, I don't know. I kind of wish we could all just race and keep our hands on the bars, but, <laughs> but he's only started to do that recently, though, right? He hasn't always done that, has he? All I know is that I didn't like he did it a couple times at Laguna, where I remember in the first race we were all coming out of turn two, and turn two. I mean, you're hard on the gas and you're accelerating hard into the into turn three. And one lap, he came out of turn two, like turns around, but as he turns around, probably unknowingly, un like just goes to right. z zero throttle. <laughs> and I almost just ass packed him right there. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like, you know, we're all we're all trying to go forward, man. I mean, I well, I, I understand like looking around and uh, and trying to know what's going on around you. Um, he did and, it and in I've Utah. Look, I look back sometimes too. Like I'm not gonna say I don't do it, but but uh, he did it to you, Utah too. Well, that, was, that, to was him, that was him trying to like yeah say hey let's all follow each other and get away. But yeah. in that situation, I had Josh Heron behind me and maybe Cameron also, and I was like I don't want to be back here trying to trying to deal with these guys. <laughs> like I want to be up there, and so yeah, you know, like it's it would like, help him, but uh, not you. I mean, we all have we all have. I, I just want to be at the front always. You know, I don't want to have to deal with anybody else. I, I want to be at the front and being first or second and you know i don't know uh yeah you, you we know, should all just race <laughs> the other part of this too i mean obviously coming into this track you know paul said cameron's been dominant here tony's leading the championship you just want to race there's no team orders with within yamaha you're not you're not necessarily going to help cameron i mean i'm not going to try to take him out right <laughs> you know, like, no, i mean for sure I, I mean if if i'm not going to win the championship i want my teammate to win Okay. Um, just because I'm, you know, I'm a Yamaha guy, I'm a Yamaha fanboy. I know somebody else is our kids, well, I, but, uh, but uh, no, I mean, I that's I'm, my team's my family, and, and you know, if I can't get it done, then I want my teammates to be able to do it. So, I mean, I I'm not uh, I, but for for me, like what I'm trying to do is just win as many races as I can. So, and t I mean, technically, I'm still kind of in it as far as the championship goes. Mm, very technically. <laughs> Math is a but wonderful I don't really thing care. Sometimes. Like, yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to win races. It, so yeah. I, I feel like I don't really have that much pressure on me. I'm just, just trying to go, yeah, win. I mean, knowing you from the past, I remember times you didn't want to talk about the points back in Supersport. You didn't want to discuss where you're not, were at. Not, you were not doing. in the, not the first time I was up for a championship. No, I didn't want to think about it. But, <laughs> but now the it's second different? time I was. Okay. Well, I mean, in, in 17, like I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. But when it when it was when it was my first year and and it was coming down to the wire, like no, I didn't want to think about points because I just wanted to go out and be able to focus and do what I do. But in seventeen, like I had more confidence and stuff, and and uh, so I, I wasn't too worried about talking about the points and everything. And I mean, I'm not I'm not really worried about it either right now. Yeah, I'm technically out of it. I am kind of out of it. So uh, I mean, I I could still do it, but it would have to be there would have to be a lot of bad luck for those other guys. 
And so I'm just gonna try to win and see what happens. <laughs> okay, I gotta remember what it was. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I got it. That's so Sean. <laughs> he was there for a That's moment. So okay, I'm taking over here. Oh shit! What was it? <laughs> okay. All right. No, I you got put it. Put some bullets in your yeah. gun. <laughs> All right. So, so Garrett, you, get, Cameron's going for the championship. Tony's going for the championship. You mathematically are still going for the championship, but you're going for wins. You yeah. are the X factor. Um, you want to keep winning. For sure. <laughs> you want to go to Seca. Is there anything about momentum? Do you feel different? Is, you know, do you approach it differently? Is it just the same thing? What, are, do you have a different mindset now? No, not really. I mean, yeah, like I said, it's been a, it's, it had been a long year not winning, but I never like gave up on myself. And I never, I never gave up on the idea that I, I couldn't win. Like I, I, I've known from the beginning that I could win. It's just actually getting it done. That's the hard part. So, uh, so now that I've actually done it, it's just, yeah, that kind of confirmation that like, okay, all the stuff I've been telling myself for the last year and a half might have some truth to it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, coming in here, uh, I for sure have like a little more confidence um, just from knowing that like, hey, I can actually do it. I haven't been lying to myself. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be tough. This is definitely has been in the past like a Cameron Bobier track. So, um, but we had a test a couple weeks ago um, and I feel like we had a, a totally different setup, but I feel like it really helped me in, in some in, in the bumps, uh, in the bumpier parts of the track. So and, and this track's pretty bumpy. So, you know, that's something else that kind of gives me a little bit of confidence. But I'm just gonna go about it the same way. I want I want to get out there and I want to have a good first first practice session. I want to qualify well, and and in the race, you never know what's gonna happen. You always have an idea of what you want to do, but in the end, you're kind of just at the mercy of uh, of yeah the other guys and and whatever whatever happens. So. We'll see, but when, when I have more we, confidence, yeah. Before, when we were at Utah, we did a podcast with Tony. It's the one where he got up on the table. We're not, I'm not setting this up for you to do that. But what I want to bring up is the fact that he, one of the funniest things about the podcast is he's talking about Josh Aaron as, as his teammate. He's like, every time I turn around, he's looking at my dad and he puts his hands up this way. And he's like, he's not digging on the fact that Aaron is like looking at his stuff all the time. But you guys, you and Cameron have had a long relationship and friendship. You're, do you guys... Share data. I mean, how much is the yeah, team? Yeah, I mean, I think I think just in between, in most teams, like data is kind of just out there, and anybody can look at it for the most part. Uh, so I mean, <laughs> I'm not yeah, sure if like I, Aladdin was around. I, I, don't I don't think know, he I don't, did. Okay. <laughs> but uh, but no, I mean, I, I I look at Cameron's data every once in a while. Like for sure, if I'm struggling, like I want to know what I'm doing wrong compared to somebody that's doing doing well. So uh, yeah, like I've looked at Cameron's data before, but I've also tried stuff that Cameron uses suspension wise or geometry wise or electronic wise and I've walked away being like I don't know how the guy rides like yeah, this right. so I mean yeah. I can't it's just like a grain of salt like I'll look at it and be like I try to look at more of gears and kind of brake brake application and throttle application those are kind of the three things that I I end up looking at the most that kind of f help me figure out what I'm doing different and different isn't always bad it's just you know trying to figure out if uh, if what I'm doing different is hurting me or or maybe yeah helping me or could help me, so uh, I mean I'm yeah. surprised. I talked to your crew chief uh, Glenn Grenfell today earlier and Rick Hobbs who was Cameron's crew chief and I was surprised the two of them told me that y you're talking about gearing. Your gearing is actually different between the two bikes. Yeah, like, some, like uh, it, more than I would yeah me too realize or yeah. more than I would think. Yeah, it's uh, I don't know how that ends up being the case, but um, but yeah, if I like a certain wheelbase. Uh, Cameron can kind of ride with more, he can, he can ride with different wheelbases. I can too, but I kind of prefer a range. And so um, if we can get in that range with a different gearing, yeah, I don't know, I've, we're kind of open to trying stuff. So like, I mean, we're still trying to figure this out also, but um, how, how, could I, how could I say it? So you, you come here, you, this weekend you start with the setup you had last year? And go from no, there, or do you no, start with like not. Laguna? No, yeah, we go from like what we've been working with. Because if we went to the setup that I had last year, it would be a totally different bike. Yeah. Is that right? So we kind of check. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Wow. Yeah. Different geometry, different. That's I don't know about incredible. the gearing's probably the same, but geometry is a lot different, and springs and stuff, and link, and yeah, I mean, there's a lot of difference. Wow. So, uh, and electronics. So yeah, I don't want to go back to a year ago. I, I feel way better on the bike I have now. So we'll keep going with that. <laughs> All that stuff that you just mentioned, there's a lot of guys that, that can do really well on a 600 or whatever, and they never quite make that transition. Is it because there's just so much there that you get can get lost instead of just thinking about, I'm just going to go ride the shit out of it like I did my 600? Yeah, I mean... Um, See, I told you I could go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that... I had to prove it. 
<laughs> I I think the hardest part, I think it's just easy to get discouraged just because it's, I mean, when I went into it from a 600 to a 1,000, I was thinking uh, a little bit extra power, but more or less the same thing, you know, but it's it's a lot different and you have to learn things, you, know, you have to learn how to ride it different. So, and uh, you know, everybody says that, but it is true at the end of the day. So sometimes I think guys have a little bit of a tougher time adapting to something new. And um, I mean, I didn't have the easiest of time, but like I said, I don't, I don't give up. So I'll keep pushing through it. Um, maybe some other guys don't have the same kind of drive or I don't know. I don't want to put words in their, in their right. mouth, but uh, but yeah, like I, I'm not giving up till I get what I want. So uh, what what is it you would want in a perfect world? Obviously, I mean, don't tell me you'd want to be a MotoGP star next year, but in a perfect world, what would you do next year? Would you like to have another shot at exactly what you're doing? Yeah, I, I mean, like I said, my team is my family and I've been with them. Well, I've been with Yamaha for so long uh, that I, I really want would like to continue our relationship and keep building and, and go farther and farther. There's things about this year that I could definitely improve next year. So um, definitely, I, I would like to continue doing what I'm doing. Um, but uh, like, there's we still don't have you know I don't have a contract yet, so so still kind of waiting on that. But yeah, I would definitely like to keep doing what I'm doing. But for sure, someday, like I want to be in Europe really bad. I would rather, I, or I not rather, but I would really like to be in either World Superbike or even you know maybe Moto Two or or yeah for sure Moto GP one day. That's what everybody says. Well, but. does it matter between the two World <clears throat> Superbike? Do you think World Superbike is okay? It's that, but then Moto GP is on this level. So it's like for sure. Yeah. I mean, the, I'm not. I think all kinds of riders from all ser- all different types of series have a ton of talent. World Superbike has a t- ton of talent. Moto Three, Moto Two, obviously Moto GP. There's talent everywhere. The, even the the Asia the Asia Cup stuff that they do over there and the Rebel Rookies Cup. What we're doing over here in Moto America, the 600 series, like there's a ton of talent everywhere. Um, but for sure, like Moto GP, they have the most uh, prestige around it, and they have the best bikes in the world, which kind of just take the best riders and make them even even shine brighter, you know. So, um, but yeah, I mean, Moto Moto or uh, World Superbike is a, is a definitely a, a tough series too. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it's kind of maybe might be a little bit easier transition because we're on the same bikes right. more or less. So, but, I mean, I, what I'm getting at is, you take a guy like Jonathan Ray. You know, is he ever going to go to Moto GP? You know, or is he? This is this is it. He's. I think it depends on what he wants to do. So, right. And and where he wants to end up. If he's happy doing what he's doing and winning. I don't blame him. Yeah. It's nice to win and make money. So, uh, right. yeah, I don't, and I don't blame him. you have to go to a lesser team in MotoGP, that yeah, doesn't make sure. sense either. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, everybody tells me, like, hey, you go to Europe, you're going to, it, it, you know, everybody kind of plays it as a step back to, to take a risk on yourself to maybe have it be, a, like, three steps forward. Um, well, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. But, but I, willing I'm, I'm, will, I'm willing to take that risk. Yeah, for sure. Like, I, because I, like I said, I I know what I where I want to end up and, and I know what I want to do with my life. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But I'm willing to take a risk to try to get there. So we'll see. And you have that really cheap house payment. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even have I'm to. I'm not living in no, uh, yeah, San Clemente or nothing like you, that. You, no. if you live in Texas, you don't even have to work. You can pay your house. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just, hey, yeah, I'm doing what I got to do. So I love living in your nice place or whatever but um, I got my goals one I got, day son one I, day I got my goals out in front of me so I'm gonna do everything I can to make sure that if it ever if there's ever that opportunity I can reach out and grab it so I don't know we'll see you know fingers crossed talking about Texas and we know your family's really really important to you and you're close to your family they weren't at Laguna Seca yeah. you're one of your closest confidants Tim Robinson wasn't there either so I mean tell me tell me what it was you know what did you do after that did you get in touch with those you know your family yeah, for and sure. Tim I and- mean I, I had a bunch of messages from like all kinds of people from from everywhere and uh, especially my family so first thing I did was call my brother actually just because he was the first name on, on the screen oh, that's great call my brother and we were all pumped up and everything he had just watched the race uh, I called my parents too after that and Everybody was yeah super super excited and I don't know I tried to just like spend that moment with them yeah. on the phone <laughs> um, and then uh, and then afterwards it, it was kind of funny uh, Caleb DeCarroll, who's yeah. a, like a good friend that also yeah. lives in Texas we train together and stuff um, I'm not his coach by the way everybody's been saying that I'm his coach <laughs> and that I made him who he is like definitely not we just we ride and, and train coach and to stuff. ride into that broken yeah. femur. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, well, imagine broken femurs, both of them. I did, yeah, I did break my femur. You're right. Did I don't you know if any, that was. Do you have any advice for him on that broken femur? <laughs> yeah. By the way, like, yeah, yeah, don't do that. it again. Yeah, don't do that again. That's not good. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, yeah, we, I went. And we we hung out and stuff, and it was cool because we both got to kind of relive our our race wins, 
you know, that, that was night, a huge so. surprise for him, right? Oh, that was some yeah, weekend. I mean, it caused it was, it was, it was a huge surprise. I mean, I see how fast he's on the on the go kart track and stuff from, and motocross when we're training and everything. But um, and I knew he was fast because he had done a, a Pittsburgh test a couple weeks before and had done like the exact same time that the race winner from Pittsburgh last year mm. had done on the twin. So I was like, all right, he's he's gonna show up and be the guy from the beginning, but. He kind of had some trouble in the beginning, and I think he qualified 12th. Yeah. and was kind of like around 12th and stuff. Yeah. But I don't know what he did before the race, but he definitely got fired up and went for it. And yeah, it paid off. Put ended up. I don't understand. He went from a 36 or something like that in practice to doing a 31.8 in yeah. the race. Like he dropped five five seconds in in two laps. That's I, I, I've of. never done that in my whole life. So. Either has the most talent in the world, and uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it needs to be riding well, MotoGP right now, or or there was something wrong with the bike before then. So I right. was talking to Jason Madama about it, and, and competitor in Twins Cup, and Jason couldn't believe it either. He was like, yeah. "Oh my God, you know, he just went crazy." Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Just, and I mean, the bike went through tech, and they tore it down, and everything was legit. <laughs> right, it's so a I, mean, I, I have so, no idea. I'm, I'm just you I'm on your motor. Sh- <laughs> yeah, I'm still shrugging over here, but I mean, I was. I was pumped for sure. Yeah. I even snuck in on on his interview I saw on, that. on TV. So yeah. So back to the family thing. Is it better for your family not to be there and you to call them later, or would you have rather <laughs> they been there? I mean, is it? No, I mean it would have been awesome if they were either there. Way, for sure. Either way, yeah. Matter. Either way. I mean, sometimes I feel like if I don't have people at the track, I'm a little more focused because I don't have anybody to try to yeah. take not take care of, but just like entertain, you know? Right. Um. So you know, sometimes I like being there by myself, but. Uh, but I definitely love having friends and family at the track too, because it takes it can t- it can kind of take stress away a little bit that you have fami- like familiarity around you. So yeah, it can go either way. But but is yeah, that what the term awesome. family comes from? Familiarity. I don't think know. it is. Yeah, I think it could be. It is. Family I like when he doesn't have family there because I don't have to get him as get him as many pounds. <laughs> That's right. That's true. <laughs> Oh, Paul. <laughs> so these these tracks that we're coming up to, we talked about Sonoma. I mean Pittsburgh, New Jersey. You, uh, you had a you won your first race at New Jersey. Yeah, well, yeah, at least yeah. in mo- in uh, AMA. I mean, yeah, you know this stuff. before that. Well, he's in a, he, he has photographic memory or something. There's nothing escapes this. <laughs> well, I remember the super sport. <laughs> that right. handled a lot. <laughs> I remember how he had, I remember Garrett, he showed up, he had like closely shorn hair and he was like, there, who is this guy? I don't even know who he is. And then he went nuts at New Jersey. So that's yeah, a good that's track for wild. you. Pittsburgh, is Pittsburgh pretty good for you? Yeah, I, I really, really liked Pittsburgh on the 600. I actually really liked it last year also. And I had my, not my best finish, but I, I, got, I got second there, yeah. which was nice in like some crazy conditions. And then I had a crash that I still can't figure out how it happened in the, yeah, sec- in the second race. but. But I, I think the track is super fun, and there's there was a ton of people out there, and the atmosphere was really cool. So yeah. I'm definitely excited to go back there. And the track is pristine, so smooth, and and a lot of grip. So I don't know. It makes it makes it fun for riders. So you've won it. You've done well at Pittsburgh. You won before at New Jersey, and we end up at Barber, which I'm going to throw another thing out there of trivia. You. You were you lived in tr- nearby Trustville for a while, yeah, so Barbara's yeah. like a home track for you. I've lived everywhere. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, so it's kind of like these next few tracks that are coming up are going to be good for you. You might yeah, be able for to. Sure. Well, I mean, just in general, like uh, between Moto America and AMA, we've been going to these tracks for a long time. So right. after going for so long, you kind of feel like you have a connection with all of them. That's true. Um, yeah. But uh, but no, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm really excited. All, I like all the tracks coming up. I like Sonoma. I've had some some really good success here also in the past. So we'll see. I just keep saying that. Fingers crossed. Like I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go see what happens. I'm just ready to get on the bike tomorrow for for first practice and well, kind of we'll kind of see how it stands. Everybody stands. So we'll see. All right. So I got to ask you this. Um, I got to figure out how to how to describe it the right way and see if you agree with me. You are seen as a little bit of a different individual, kind of in terms of <laughs> the way. Where, that where, where are we going? <laughs> well, you're you're more you're you're you think a lot. You you. Kind of keep things close to the vest sometimes. Paul, Paul can just <laughs> say it differently. Let me, let, me, yeah. let me give you an I'll example. I'll argue that. <laughs> let me give you an example. A few years ago, I know, talking to Josh Hayes, Josh said, I can't, fi- I can't figure him out. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know him. Now he's, now he's your coach. I, think he's, I don't know. Do you, are you a different person than you were? But do you know what I'm talking about with that? Do you? Well, I mean, for sure, like what I was saying earlier, as I started racing when I was a kid, you know, 16. I'm still a kid, but uh, there's a lot of growing in general that I had to do uh, just in that period of time from like, yeah, when I was 16 to now. I know a lot more just in right. general about life and stuff. So uh, I think part of that just can, uh, yeah, 
I, I kind of had my awkward moment in life later. <laughs> so, uh, and when I was when I was a pro and stuff, I guess. So people might have gotten to know me in the wrong point of of that. So uh, you know, I don't even know. I'm not even necessarily saying it's that because I've known you for a long time, and I think you still the basic basis of your personality. You're a really friendly guy, very a good, uh, you know, a smart kid. You. Uh, a smart sure. man, I should say now. But I mean, you really. But in terms of your racecraft, I mean, I think you think about what you're doing. You understand the mechanics of a motorcycle. You were talking to us before about the wheelbase. I mean, you 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 have that going for you. So I think you might be more of a thinking man's racer. Maybe that's what it is. You Maybe. know, it's less. I mean, I, for sure, Josh is like that's that's right. one of the things that that has been really nice working with him this year is is he's ridden the same bike as me. But he is that technical. He has that technical mind, right. and that's how he goes about things, you know. So um, that's been nice to kind of, and it has given me a, a better understanding of, of kind of what I what I look for and and what I'm doing. So that's that's been uh, nice, and maybe it's rubbed off on me a little bit that kind of aspect. But I mean, it depends. Sometimes I can be like a real th- thinking racer on the track during a race, but it de- but if the bike's not perfect and stuff, I'm probably more focused on that than I am trying to, you know. Uh, I don't know. It depends. It depends on the race. So yeah. But thanks. I appreciate it, Sean. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm not trying to. I know that you've changed as you grow, and we all change as we grow. I get that. And certainly, yeah, yeah. somebody who's just you're still only 24 years old. But you know, I'm just saying it's it's kind of a different. Some people think of you and Cameron as being like twin sons from different mothers, <laughs> kind of thing. But no, they do. People have said that about you, right? I've had a ton of people come up to me and ask for. As thinking I'm Cameron, yeah, they, thinking, exactly. thinking that, or uh, yeah, and they want a Cameron autograph. When like, they find like, out you're oh, not, do they walk away? That's that's he's over there. Yeah, that's happened more than once. Yeah, like oh okay, not anymore uh, though. Well, I, still, still, yeah. <laughs> that's the worst thing ever. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it's kind of funny. I have Sean. They yeah. think he's me. Yeah, so yeah. Hey, just, there might yeah. be a few people out there that have a Cameron Bovier poster yeah. signed by Garrett Gerlach. So. <laughs> Just so you know, check check the signature. Yeah, don't try to sell it. <laughs> check the signature <laughs> before you sell it. Yeah. So, All right, let's wrap this. Okay. Thing up. All right. You got any more stupid questions? No, I mean, I think we've got it covered. But, you know, thanks for joining us for no, another Off Track. Thank you, Garrett, for joining us. And congratulations again on your win at Laguna. We'll see what you do at Sonoma. We're looking forward to more wins out of you. We knew it was going to happen. It. Now we think the floodgates have opened and you're just going to go nuts. I will see. <laughs> we'll see. I, uh, I I feel good. I feel confident. So, you know, if anything comes out of that, that'd be nice. But if not, I'm not giving up till I win some more. <laughs> there you go. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. All right.